I got a question on YouTube about injuries. So the basic idea was the person was asking, why on earth would you train jujitsu knowing that you're going to get injured from it at some point? Because I've talked about this, right? Injuries in jujitsu are not a question of if, it's a question of when. When are you gonna get injured? And the person just couldn't understand. Why on earth would you train when you know you're gonna get injured? So I wanted to do a video on why you would train jujitsu in spite of the fact that you're gonna get injured, right? So before I talk about maybe the whys of, of injuries and maybe even like how to mitigate some of those injuries, let me get you to think about this. I have friends that do like CrossFit or do swimming or do running or do all sorts of different activities, tennis even, right? And guess what? They've all been injured at some point, right? Some of them pretty bad injuries. Like I had a friend who played tennis, very casually played tennis, right? Not even, he played a couple times a week and he, he twisted his knee and, and uh, freaking tore his ACL. I also have friends that have do nothing. Like they sit on their couch and eat Cheetos and, and do nothing and, and they have bulging discs and tore up knees and all kinds of bad problems, posture issues, right? And then I have friends that do jujitsu and they're, they're, they're injured too. So no matter how much you wanna hang on to the, and preserve this little flesh suit that you got that's sitting on this friggin' rock that's spinning through space, there's no matter what you wanna do, right? it's gonna go at some point. It's gonna deteriorate, it's gonna break down, and it's gonna go. The only, one of the few certainties that you have in life, right, is that you are going to break down and you're going to die. That's one of the few certainties. And I know that maybe that sounds kind of morbid, but I don't know, it's just, it is what, it's a fact of life. There's no way around it. I don't think it's kind of morbid. It just, it is what it is. And knowing that, right, I don't, for me personally, knowing that I'm going to get injured no matter what I do, knowing my body's going to break down no matter what I do, I don't want to get to the finish line of my life and be, strong across thinking that I, I was scared to like do things that I wanted to do and because I wanted to, pr to preserve this body and get, you know, even if, even if let's say that I didn't get injured, right? And I run across the finish line of my life. I'm dying, but I'm like, man, I got great shoulders and great knees. I don't want that to happen. I want to be, the, when, the, when the day comes where I'm getting ready to kick the bucket, because you don't know when that's going to be. It could be tomorrow. It could be four years from now. It could be 30 years from now. When I start, hey, I want to be limping across the finish line, just ready to go. Right, because I want to know that I live my life on my terms, not because I was scared to do something. And when I, I was thinking about this question, one of the memories that I have um, as a young man was at a gym, like a weightlifting gym. So back in the day, um, I, I used to bust tables and I used to serve um, when I was in college and, and even in high school to make money. And there was this guy that owned a gym in the middle of town, and he used to come in for lunch and, and, and eat. And I remember him and I started talking one day and he was an old lifter, he's an old, he's a pretty big guy still. And he was an old lifter, done some Olympic lifting and power lifting, things like that. And he did a little bit of strongman back in the day. And he was like, hey, come out and train with me. Really nice guy, so we became friends. And when I would go train with him, keep in mind, this guy's like 70 years old and he could still like 255 pounds seated behind the neck press. He could do like a 315 incline. And I mean, really, really strong guy for his age. But he had all kinds of injuries, like right, like he couldn't squat anymore because his knees were all jacked up, and he's all stiff, and you know it, it was you could tell that it had taken a toll on him, right? And I remember though, what really stood out about him as a person is because he's an old guy, right? he's getting close to seventy, and I know that when I meet most seventy-year-olds, they're like broken down people too, but they're also like. They don't, they, don't, they don't look alive, right? This guy was like nearly 70 years old and he's silly, he's excited, he's vibrant, right? He's all over the place. And I always thought that was super cool. And even like on Friday nights, we would get together and max out on weights. The guy was still maxing out. He would, he would come out there and start wrapping his body up in all these different wraps and things like that. And he'd start slathering on this, you know, Bengay or Icy Hot or whatever, you know, it's burning everybody's eyes and nostrils. And he's just like, yep, yeah, let's get ready and go, guys. And, and he's doing all this stuff and he'd work out with us. And you could tell that because he'd always tell stories about what he did. He had experiences and he, you know, he had all these, these things that he, competitions he'd done like bodybuilding, Olympic lifting, all this stuff. And he'd been on all these trips and met all these amazing people and had all these amazing experiences that enriched his life. And you could tell that not one moment did he feel sorry that he had all these injuries in spite of it because he knows that like, man, like, you know, I had all these experiences and, you know, I, I used this vehicle that I was given to do all these cool things. I'm okay with that exchange. And again, when you compare him to older people, he was there all jacked up too and he's just jacked up, but he's, he's alive, right? And so when I look at that guy, that was kind of one of those people where I was like, man, when I get older, I want to be like that. And what I'm getting at now is that, again, when I get to the end, 
I don't want to look back and think that I missed out on all kinds of opportunities and cool experiences in my life because I was afraid to get injured because again, injuries are going to come regardless of whether or not you do something or you don't do anything at all. Now, why would I train Jiu Jitsu in spite of all that? Well, because again, there's so many benefits to it, but one of the big reasons that I train Jiu Jitsu and I talk about this because again, you know, there, you can't really have Jiu Jitsu without the community. The training and the community kind of come hand in hand and I don't think that it works without the one without the other. But in Jiu Jitsu, you get to like connect with people on a different way that you don't get to do outside of the gym. You know, for me personally, I think about the fact that there is a bond that exists between us when we're rolling because we're literally play killing. Like I'm putting you in a position where I could kill you if I wanted to. You put me in a position where you could rip my arm off if you wanted to, but I'm, you're going to let go and you're going to, I'm going to trust you that you're going to keep me healthy, right? That's a lot of trust there. I don't trust a lot of people like that, right? I don't walk out of the gym and, and I wouldn't trust the average person. So there's a huge amount of trust that's being shared with each other and that creates a bond that's very tight and very strong that, you know, transcends just regular speaking to one another. Also, you can sort of get past the social mask that we have on. You know, like when, when, we're, when we walk outside, we all have kind of like an armor, suit of armor on, right? We're, we're shielding ourselves to the world around. We don't, we don't really expose who we are to most people, right? Who we really are, not who we allow ourselves to be. And when you come into jujitsu and train with someone, you start to chink away and like chip away at that thing. Because like when you meet someone and you roll with them, a lot of times I've had guys who are like really quiet and introverted, and then you start rolling with them and they're incredibly aggressive and intense and you're like, whoa, there's someone else under there, you know? And then over time, because you, you, it's like literally you beat it away from each other, right? Because you're training so hard, you realize it's all silly shit. We're all doing the same stuff. We're, we're human beings and you're doing the same exact thing. We're all kind of on the same level. And all that, like that, that armor that you have on that shields you from everyone, a lot of times gets just pushed away. And you get to meet people on a really cool, deep level and get to know a lot about them over the years. And I really like that. I like the connection with people. And I don't, I don't know what I would do without that because there's not a lot of places that in life right now that exist that are like that. The next thing is the training. The training's fun. It's in, it's it's great. It's fun to like push yourself. It's like a video game, you know, because you get you like learn a new move and you get to take it and try it out. It's almost like you get a new weapon in the game. And it's also incredible for like stress relief. I know that for me personally, one of the most stressful situations in my life was when my mother was passing away from cancer. You know, she I watched this this excited, energetic woman that my mom was, and she slowly degraded over the course of a year, and she became a shell of herself. And that was really hard for me to watch personally. But I knew that when I came into the gym, I'd come in and I would be stressed out. I'd be ready to break down as soon as I came in. But I would walk in, I would come into the gym, I would train, and all that stress was just rah, dumped off me. And I could go back out of the gym and I could put my smiley face on, right? I could be strong for her in her time of need. And there's been tons of times where that stress relief has come into play, but that's probably the most, like, extreme situation. And so that stress relief is huge. I think everyone that trains would attest to that. And there's a number of different reasons, but you get the idea. There's so many benefits that I get from it. The connection with people, the training itself, the fitness, the self-defense that I've got from it. From you, for you guys that maybe rag on jujitsu for not being effective self-defense, man, I can tell you from personal experience, from the person's experience from my students who are in law enforcement and who've just been in an unfortunate situation, it works. It works really, really well. It's incredibly effective for hand-to-hand -hand self-defense. And so again, all these things combined, I will exchange a little bit of a heightened, you know, risk of injury for all these benefits that I get. Now, as far as mitigation of injuries, I just want to touch on this because obviously you don't want to press the gas pedal down too much and, you know, use the body up prematurely. Keep your goals in alignment with what you are wanting to achieve, right? So again, a lot of times people train outside of their goals. They'll, they'll be like, I just want to train for fitness and fun but they're training like five, six days a week because they got addicted to training and they're so excited, it's so much fun. Ease up off the gas pedal a little bit. Also, a lot of you guys come in and you'll, you know, you'll be injured and you keep training harder. Like ease up a little bit sometimes. A lot of you guys don't do any stretching or, uh, and I'm not talking to you guys. I'm talking when I say you guys, most of the time it's like, you know, people that I've met, a lot of people don't stretch or do any sort of cool downs after training. A lot of people don't do any stretching or anything when they get home. They just train jujitsu and that's it. They don't do any sort of strengthening after jujitsu or don't do any weight training to sort of work off some of the imbalances. Because again, every exercise or athletic activity has inherent problems and muscular imbalances that it will cause. It's just how it is. There's no way around it. So you want to make sure that you're mitigating it by trying to take care of the body holistically by, you know, 
if, if you know, for instance, jujitsu causes a lot of this crunching, so we want to open up things and, and create extension in the body. And so we need to do that with different strength training or different light exercises that we can do to sort of offset that. But again, I think that a lot of people would be simply, um, would get a lot out of simply training in alignment with your goals. If you're not tra if you're not training for a competition, you don't need to train like a competitor. Just have fun with it, enjoy it. I know that we get addicted to it and we all wanna get better, but at times you gotta let up off the gas pedal. And it's, it's one thing you may not think about. I've met some, some high level competitors and their bodies are just wrecked because they press that gas pedal down and they didn't let up. So every now and then if you're doing this for like a longevity person. Now, if you're a competitor, that's an exchange, right? You're saying like, I'm gonna, it's like a football player, right? Those guys go out and, and they play a sport that's incredibly destructive to their body. It's gonna wear them out a little bit. Being a jiu-jitsu, like full-time competitor, it's the same way. Ease up a little bit sometimes. And even as a competitor, you can let your training undulate. So, you know, when you're getting ready for competition, ramp it up. When it's not time, let it come down just a little bit, right? And, you know, it doesn't mean slack on your diet. It just means don't you don't have to train so hard all the time. I'm just kind of rambling at this point, guys. But that's why I train jiu-jitsu in spite of all the injuries, because I get all these cool benefits, and I've seen other people, like the, the guy that I spoke about, his name was Jim. I remember Jim, you know, the guy that owned the gym, how he had used his body up and was very okay with that because of the experiences he had. And for me personally, again, I just don't want to look back at the end of my life and realize that there was something I really, really loved and I didn't do it because I was scared to do it. Even though at the end of my life, there's no way around it, I'm gonna die and my body's gonna get used up. So, guys, I'm done rambling. Hopefully this video was helpful in some way and I'll talk to you guys next time.